All right. Uh, welcome to the session on design considerations for a production cloud with OpenStack. Uh, I'd like to introduce, uh, it's a tag team effort which we put together. Uh, it's not an all Intel show. Uh, I'm Ruchi Bhargav. I work for Intel IT uh, as the hybrid cloud product owner. And I'd like to introduce Shukwan Huang. He's from our China IT team. Uh, and uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, my name is Shu Quan Huang, actually. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm from uh, Shanghai, China, Intel IT team. We are work working on the uh, Intel Power Cloud. Yes. Okay, and I'd uh, also like to introduce. Uh, I'm Kai from Nanan Cloud. We are partner uh, of Intel pro to provide the uh, software service. All right. So uh, the agenda topic today is basically what we went through and what are the big things which uh, one should consider when designing a production kind of a cloud uh, solution for hosting. And uh, in an enterprise, it is mostly enterprise focused. We're not talking about the telco and uh, you know, the CSP use case. Uh, what I will go through is uh, you know, what are the different uh, use cases within an enterprise which Intel is uh, using our OpenStack cloud? Uh, what has um, been our IT, enterprise IT cloud journey? What uh, are the production uh, cloud design considerations, both technical and non-technical? And then uh, we'll also have uh, Kai talk about, you know, uh, if uh, that was the enterprise IT large uh, business uh, viewpoint. And he'll talk about how small and medium businesses can uh, deploy a production cloud using OpenStack and how, uh, you know, uh, it is different from what a large enterprise would do. And you know, please feel free to uh, stop us for questions in between. Uh, there's a mic there, uh, or just shout out and we'll uh, stop because uh, we've got uh, material which we've put in the backup just in case we run out of uh, time, but uh, I, I didn't want to uh, fall short on questions. So uh, in, if you look at, there's no pointer here, but if you look at this, uh, we've got OpenStack deployment. And uh, majority of it is enterprise IT uh, shop, uh, which is, you know, we have the enterprise applications, the ERP kind of applications, as well as office applications, which are hosted on Intel Cloud. And then we have our lab uh, set up. Being a big design and manufacturing company, there are several labs, or, you know, thousands of labs all over the country. And how can we provide uh, computing solutions to them? So uh, Hugh Kwan is going to talk about that too. And that's one of the big lab hosting use case. And then we have a new business uh, use case, which is you know, where uh, we, Intel is going into, uh, and enterprise is going into several uh, new business initiatives. And uh, how, you know, do you, you don't want to in, use the existing infrastructure solutions, hosting solutions, to uh, uh, go for that, uh, to, uh, to make an investment there, because uh, they may or may not be viable. So what is uh, the right kind of solution for them? And uh, so that's the, what we call an external facing new business solution. And there are several uh, initiatives. We have something what we call an incubator, where you know, for a short term, they don't need a lot of uh, typical IT bureaucratic processes. They can get an environment up and running for a in a very quick time. And that's in the new business hosting environment. And that generally is external facing, where they can work with their industry partners, exchange information without the restrictions of working with the enterprise uh, capability. And as we've talked earlier uh, about, you know, we always have the uh, la, la, you know, older companies uh, have uh, existing infrastructure. How do you integrate that with the new uh, deployment of OpenStack? So uh, we have an existing infrastructure which has proprietary hypervisors, proprietary storage solutions, and then we have a new infrastructure which is, uh, you know, mostly KVM, ESX, as well as uh, open source storage, as well as proprietary storage. So it's a, a combination, and uh, so that comes with challenges, and we'll talk about that. So, but it does also provide a convergence opportunity for all the three use cases. There are different organizations. We are a 100,000 people company with different um, silos of uh, compute uh, infrastructures. But OpenStack then provides us a huge opportunity for uh, consolidation. So this is our IT cloud journey. If you look at 1.0, it was a proprietary orchestration layer uh, provided by a vendor. Uh, with proprietary hypervisor, proprietary uh, storage. And uh, it worked great, mostly a virtualization story for us. 
Then we did, a uh, couple of years ago, we started a 1.0 journey, which was OpenStack-based. We wrote our own utility for orchestration. We call it OCU. I don't know if one of our persons, he's no longer at Intel, he's here who's, who's the author of that. Uh, and, uh, but we uh, deployed that, uh, and we basically integrated with, uh, it was a hybrid cloud implementation, it was a pilot with Amazon. And uh, I should have, I normally don't take names, but it's public cloud. And uh, then we had Ceph, it was based on Ceph as a storage, and network was a physical network, and compute, uh, you know, standard uh, compute boxes. Uh, we had uh, some uh, great learnings from there. Ma majority of the learnings were that there was a huge technical debt which we incurred. We decided at that point of time that we are going to go with a hybrid strategy of uh, 2.0, which is uh, we will, <coughs> our hybrid solution will be uh, in tie up with uh, OpenStack based hybrid uh, public cloud provider. We will have our uh, groups which need Amazons and the other uh, cloud service providers which are not OpenStack based uh, available to them uh, for public uh, cloud usage, but our hybrid solution will be an OpenStack solution because we want it to go purely native use upstream uh, code directly without incurring any technical debt uh, for an IT cloud's perspective. And uh, the only development which our engineering team would do would be integrating with the enterprise, uh, like it's, you know, the last mile integration with the enterprise applications. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. And then here we uh, have both hypervisors, which are uh, open source hypervisors as well as proprietary. Uh, we have SDN which we've implemented with uh, Cloud 2.0. And then we have storage, which is both Ceph and uh, proprietary storage. And uh, as, you, as I've talked about this earlier, and I would love to find out if anybody else has uh, found solutions for a better integration of legacy with uh, you know, the open source storage and compute. And what are the challenges? Any questions on this? So this is our current uh, cloud, I, uh, Intel Cloud 2.0 uh, high-level architecture picture. So what we have is the open uh, source control plane, and that control plane can be consumed. It has API interactions uh, in multiple ways. You, of course, have a GUI, which is, we use Horizon, which is a web GUI, uh, and we try to make minimal changes to it because uh, you know the more changes we make to it uh, you know it becomes more difficult to maintain every time we have a new release uh, then we have custom automation opportunities you know there's uh, in a large enterprise it shop there are lots of processes so we've tried to automate a lot of processes uh, you know we call it automate it you know there were some security processes uh, you know in order to get a firewall access for an external facing web app it, it, it required a lot of approvals. So we've done self-service approvals based on what kind of criteria they are, and they use the custom automation APIs through the control plane. Then we have policy or template-driven orchestration. That is, you know, when there are, uh, you know, what kind of uh, patches uh, and down-the-wire patch installations. Those can be implemented using the APIs uh, for uh, those. That's a use case for that. And then we have PaaS automation. We have using Cloud Foundry. Uh, some of you must have attended the presentation yesterday by Kathy. And uh, so we uh, pass Cloud Foundry uses APIs from the uh, OpenStack control plane. And then at the back end, we've got, we use multi cinder uh, uh, back end for uh, con you know, connecting with different kind of storage solutions. We are using uh, a SAN solution, uh, which is the legacy infrastructure. We've got lots of investments there, so we do want to leverage that. And that's, you know, the whole picture is all about cost. So uh, we have multiple storage solutions here. We have a physical network managed by a SDN uh, you know, front end. And then uh, we also have uh, multiple hypervisors. Multiple hypervisors become necessary more because we uh, don't want to have people go to two different uh, uh, portals or control planes for our previous uh, Intel Cloud 1.0, you know, whatever they provisioned. So what we are going to be doing is uh, all those VMs will be uh, converged with the new VMs, and then they can all have a single plane where they can manage previously provisioned VMs with, as well as the new ones. And uh, the primary focus and drivers for this was, uh, you know, becoming, uh, providing more self-service. There's a huge demand for that. 
And uh, one of the challenges which you know I heard from uh, the Expedia presentation earlier from the keynote is uh, they didn't feel that there was a lot of free banana concept. We call it free bananas because when you know you give out free bananas, people take them. They don't even use them; they just throw them uh, on, at the desk, right? So uh, initially, we did face that, and that people would just consume a VM, just say, hey, "Oh, it's a really easy to consume. Let's go and provision a VM." And uh, but. Uh, Later on, we have now come to uh, see af after you know educating a lot of them that you are using resources. Once you consume it, it is you know taking. Uh, you can't just over provision, uh, and sometimes they may be real users, right? So we have uh, uh, seen some sort of uh, alignment, or people are becoming. Uh, what's the term which Expedia used? They are becoming more uh, aware that they consume only what they need. And uh, so self-service has become uh, much more of a viable solution. Uh, you know, from their perspective, it's great. But from an IT cost management perspective, we've got to manage it. You can't just, uh, there is cost to it. And then uh, reduce migration impact on ROI. So uh, when you have a lot of uh, proprietary uh, uh, solutions there, uh, we, you know, I, I'm not going to use the example of infrastructure hosting, but uh, ERP solutions. We have uh, one of we use one of the major uh, ERP solutions, and uh, we realized that in order to stay current, we, you know, you, there was no. Uh, upgrade cycles without downtime available in that ERP solution. So we were at least 12 generations behind. And then we had to make a huge investment to come to uh, the current capability. So we didn't want to have the same kind of, uh, uh, we didn't want to face the same scenario in our hosting infrastructure. And we, that's one of the key drivers for going open source. And uh, so it basically uh, reduces the migration impact. And then a, a user experience, you know, from a legacy uh, previously provisioned VMs to the newly provisioned VMs, they have the same user experience with the added capability of self-service management. You know, self-service provisioning is good, but our previous capability was not allowing self-service management. You, they couldn't shut down, restart. They had to put a ticket uh, to the help desk to restart their VMs or you know, uh, bring it ba back or patch them. Now they can do all of it themselves using the uh, control plane which we offer. And then it, of course, offers us uh, good resource utilization, we, uh, which is, again, a cost play. So you want hey. to, uh, let Shukwan take the next. Thank you, Ruchi, for uh, introducing the cloud journey and uh, the strategy. So uh, go with me to see the detailed considerations for um, build a production OpenStack cloud. At the beginning, I think most of you may start from uh, Proof of concept, you have a DevOps team, you build a stable, small cloud for a limited uh, customer to use it to prove this concept if it works. And from the, here we should consider at from the beginning, the cloud architecture, you should decide for the scale out because in the future, the cloud must be scaled. And uh, another important is that we should uh, consider about the uh, how how to fulfill the customer the requirement by the cloud functionalities, and most important is that we should keep this cloud stable, extremely stable, so that the customer can k stay in this cloud and use it, and more and more customer will come to use this cloud. So more and more customer use it. The next problem we met is how to scale out this cloud. As I just said. At the beginning, you, the, uh, the design of this cloud is um, for scale out. So you can easily scale out this cloud with a bigger cloud and fulfill much more customer. And we, uh, as a company, we have uh, the uh, existing investment. So OpenStack as a control plan, just you, you see in the previous slides, it can also help to manage the existing infrastructure. So a cloud can help us to save money, cost effective, and not only for the uh, investment, but also can help us to save the uh, human efforts. How to do that? OpenStack has the in, uh, consistent API, and we can use those API, take advantage of this area to automation, operate this cloud to save a lot of human efforts. By these ways, we can have more customers, have big cloud, but we have a uh, stable DevOps team, the, peop the headcount of this maybe can keep stable. So 
we can save money by launch a cloud. When we have a big cloud here, we have keep going. Uh, how we get the customer requirement, customer, customer may have the feedback of this cloud, we will keep uh, add more functions, more compu uh, component into this cloud. And also, customer may encounter some problems, we will uh, fix them. But to do that, we also need a good support model and operating model for that around this cloud, right? At this stage, we are almost get into the uh, production stage, except uh, one mile. We have to uh, resolve the um, uh, integrate with your uh, authentication system inside your company. We don't want uh, the employee in inside your company have different account to log in into a cloud and log in with other systems. So we should, for example, integrate Keystone with your own uh, system inside your company so that the cloud can be smoothly integrated with, uh, with your existing system inside this cloud. After that, I think we can get a um, uh, production OpenStack cloud. So uh, just talk, uh, use the slides to introduce the programs from a small cloud growing up to a production cloud. Here I have uh, three major uh, technical vectors to show the uh, considerations. One is the uh, stability. Uh, mm, stability is very important. We should consider it from the beginning to the end. Maybe no end for your cloud before ever. What, what, uh, the cloud is, is, should be extremely stable so it can stay the customer here. The first element we should consider is the redundancy. Several redundancy. For example, for the uh, as we may know, service redundancy, we can build multiple controllers in OpenStack, right? So the, uh, we can have redundancy, no API service or other services. Also, we should consider about the um, server level redundancy. Do you have, for example, do you have redundancy network NIC or do you have redundancy power adapter on your server. Also, uh, in the rack level, we should consider about the redundancy. We you put all the controller in one rack, that is not actually not redundancy, right? If one rack is lose power, then all the controller will done, then your cloud will have problem. Also, from the data center level, do we have redundancy? And from the network perspective, do you have redundancy on your call switch in your data center? So there is the uh, redundancy, multiple levels we should consider about that. Uh, after we launch a cloud, the cloud will run a long time. In this long time, how we keep this cloud stable? I think the monitor and alert is very important. It will help us uh, keep this cloud stable during this oper uh, all the life cycle of this cloud. There are also many um, levels of the uh, monitor and alert. For example, host level monitor and alert. It's the host down. What's the uh, uh, load average of this uh, host? And also service level monitor. Is some open state service done? Is it running all right? When it's done, how, how long it will send you the alert? There are also uh, log level metrics. Uh, monitor and alert. As uh, an operator of OpenStack Cloud, normally people will um, fi check the logs to see any error happened. We will find the root cause. So if you have some tools to monitor this log, get the logs, and automatically send out some error alert, that will help you a lot to keep this cloud uh, stable. The last thing I want to mention is the VM level monitor and alert. We, uh, as a cloud, you should find a problem before the customer say, hey, this VM is loose network connection or this VMY is slowly. So we should have a uh, great monitor for the uh, VM level monitor. We can, for example, leverage the uh, cell meter or install some um, QMU agent guest in some VM to help us monitor those VM, get the metrics and find the problem before the uh, customers. 
There are many tools here to help us do that. For example, monitor, we can use uh, Ganglia to get metrics from host. And for the alert, we can use Negros or Shinken to help to uh, send out the mail. Isolation. How many guys use a cell or a host aggregate in the OpenStack? I think uh, the isolation, what isolation mean, means is that we can, there are several use cases in your cloud. Some people use VM to uh, build the uh, large workload. The VM require, for example, 32 cores, maybe uh, 32 gigabyte memories. That large size VM, it will have uh, impact to other normal VM if you put them together. So we can use the isolation uh, concept, for example, host aggregate to separate different use cases to avoid the noise of some VMs and keep the, uh, keep the cluster stable. And scalability. At the beginning, I just said you should design the uh, design for your cloud. Every component should be uh, should be able to scale out. What does that mean? When you um, use some OpenStack component, you have to do some investigation to see if this com uh, component can be scaled out. If that component uh, component can be scaled out, take one example here. Previously, a uh, neutron L3 agent, as you know, is not good for scale out. So when you uh, up, uh, use Neutron, you will consider how uh, how scale of your cloud going to be. If it's large size, maybe you will uh, want to use the uh, L3 agent. So that is for the design. Once you uh, you are make sure every component in your cloud is able to scale out, the next thing is how to automation deploy it, right? If you have customer uh, uh, needs increase, you want to have the auto deploy a, a component quickly into your cloud uh, environment. For example, uh, customer want more VMs and current your uh, OpenStack compute nodes is uh, under heavy load, you will want to add a uh, bare metal into your cluster and then put from the, uh, maybe put from network and install the OS automatically and then use Puppy to deploy OpenStack compute node and add into the cluster immediately to resolve this kind of issues. <coughs> the next, uh, next one is maintain, maintain this. How a small group of people can maintain a large scale uh, cloud? API matters. The, mo the one of the important value of OpenStack is it provides a consistent API. So many tools or many small, uh, you can develop some small kits to invoke the OpenStack API and then build your, uh, to maintain this cloud automation uh, automatically. When the OpenStack uh, iteration is very quickly, there are several, uh, many patches uh, released. So, uh, to better maintain this cloud, we, it's better for us to build a local CI or CD environment in, a, in, your, um, in your site so that you can test some patch and go through the CI gate and then automatically deploy into your production environment to do a smoothly upgrade. Last one is about the cloud data analysis. As I just mentioned, we have a lot of monitor tools. We can collect the centralized the logs. A cloud platform it generates data uh, very big every day. There are many information you can get from this data. And this data is important for the uh, operator of this cloud. So how we utilize this data? In our practice, we will uh, centralize the uh, gang for example, ganglia metrics or log metrics and the uh, Schenken alert. It will uh, go into one place and we can do some analysis on that. For example, uh, for example, one uh, 10 o'clock, one operator he found, wow, there is an issue in the, this cloud. So one VM done 
and he wants to find what uh, find out the root cost. How 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 he can do by use this cloud data analysis. He can search the centralized database and he will find out at 10 o'clock there are what's the monitor status of the uh, host level and what kind of alert the Schenken has found and what kind of uh, log error has happened. By centralizing all the data together, you can have all the all kinds of Im information together to help you to find the root cause very quickly. So it will help the uh, maintain maintenance very well. So I finished the uh, technical vectors. Next one, Ruchi will help to introduce the non-technical. Yeah. So uh, you know. Uh, Besides getting the technical uh, benefits of uh, from OpenStack uh, or for any uh, cloud implementation, there are definitely uh, several non-technical uh, considerations. Also, foremost is cost. You know, in any enterprise, we all are there for making money, and uh, so the total cost of ownership comes into play. And you know, at, at least uh, at Intel, we. For any new initiative, you have to go through a huge ROI analysis. And so what we had to do was, uh, you know, you do a POC uh, using uh, Skunk Works, find old servers which are really old, and uh, test out and do a tech evaluation. Once you have the tech evaluation done, that it uh, does work, then you do a POC where you uh, look at the cost implications and get uh, you know forward looking cost analysis done in terms of how does it uh, what is the cost of integrating with the existing implementation uh, and uh, what is the impact to the user experience what is the cost of transition change management uh, those are different uh, vectors which uh, from a cost which play into the cost picture which will then uh, help uh, us make a decision and uh, so from a total cost of ownership perspective, you do that analysis. And uh, the approach which we took was uh, we are going to uh uh, we have 13 data centers across the company located globally. We are not going to be uh, replacing all of them immediately with our uh, 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 with a greenfield implementation of uh, OpenStack. Uh, we have existing uh, deployments of open uh, of our internal cloud. We use the control plane, a single control plane strategy, with which will bridge the uh, which will provide a transitionary approach and you know use the internal uh, cloud 1.0 uh, as well as uh, 2.0, ma manage it through orchestrate it through the control plane. And then when we have a 3.0 infrastructure which is ready to be deployed, we can phase out 1.0 and move on to, uh, so it provides a framework for moving forward. So that was from a total cost of ownership perspective. The next big factor is uh, workforce transformation. You know, uh, from when uh, our first internal cloud 1.0, we have a pretty decent uh, GUI, but it, what it meant was you request, and then the support group, uh, the hosting organization which runs the cloud, was also used to, uh, you know, pushing buttons on the GUI and managing it. And very, uh, but you know, they would do the same thing over and over again, but very little automation. And that systems administrate, the sysadmin approach was missing, and. Uh, that transformation to move from push button to uh, automate, uh, automate IT, automate uh, uh, cloud uh, from an uh, operations perspective was the uh, biggest transformation which our organization had to go through in the last couple of years, uh, which basically meant uh, you know, uh, basic open stack training for the entire organization, which was uh, running, d uh, not only designing it, but also implementing it and uh, managing it uh, from an operations group perspective. And uh, so we uh, provided basic training. Then we ran boot camps for OpenStack uh, with uh, the, you know, we, uh, of course, there are external companies which provided the training. Mirantis was one of them. There were several local companies in the different locations which we have. Uh, and so, uh, you know, even though uh, there are plenty of companies available, but to provide similar level of training was a big challenge. So you got to agree on, like, you know, at that time we were on SX. And, uh, uh, Folsom was coming, and whether we move, uh, what, uh, the consideration was, are we going to jump from SX to Grizzly, or are we going to SX to Folsom to Grizzly? And uh, you know, the training uh, companies, uh, what kind of training they provide, whether it is based on what release, was also important because people would, you know, people who've never worked with OpenStack, uh, when they take a training based on, say, uh, you know, and I'm talking about a uh, year and a half, two years ago, right? So the, today, if somebody learned on Havana, and if they talk about Juno. 
uh, what are the differences if the, uh, uh, the training is not comprehending that, that that's a challenge and you got to keep some uh, pay minute attention to that uh, effort also and then uh, so that's from a training perspective now uh, from an operational perspective uh, you know when you deploy any new capability uh, the QA team does automated testing but what the another uh, BK you know another method which we employed which helped us train the organization was we provided regression tests to it, uh, a group of people who were going to support it and before making any major releases all of them had to run those manual test cases and uh, you know which pro basically provided them a knowledge of uh, what are the different use cases the customers would actually use and I think uh, it slowed down our release a little bit but then our uh, support was excellent they knew exactly what the customer would really want uh, or what issues they would face and if at all uh, you know it was not automated and uh, what else from workforce transformation so th those are the key workforce transformation uh, uh, transitions which we saw uh, then the last mile integration you know is uh, on two front one is on security you know from a uh, security systems you know how do you patch all our uh, infrastructure hosts what kind of in, in, you know we have say we use big fix so how does big fix integrate with our deployment then from uh, uh, EAM which is enterprise access management uh, you know you as uh, Shukwan said you don't want them to log in uh, to their outlook uh, or other enterprise applications with one login and you want uh, them to provision with the same login so what kind of integration which we had to do so that was another integ keystone integration was uh, uh, big and uh, that that's the place where we use some of our engineering resources and uh, what's the third one so there's uh, so and security you know how do we make sure that uh, no the, uh, I already talked about security the th next one is about service management so to run an operation shop you have to have good asset management good incident management on on these servers which we are provisioning uh, and uh, so integrate it with whatever the service management uh, capability which uh, your company uses we use service now so how do we integrate with the service now so all configuration items uh, any event uh, driven uh, <coughs> login so when I provision a VM it needs to go and make sure that it's provisioned in uh, service now irrespective of uh, which method you know on that picture we had uh, PaaS provisioning VMs we had uh, you know policy driven uh, as well as GUI driven so all of them uh, it doesn't need to be front-end uh, driven integration it needs to be basically uh, our control plane driven integration with the service management capability and then uh, as I talked about workforce transformation uh, that basically led to a support model transition you know uh, and I'm going to actually show a picture this picture so you know our first Intel one point Intel cloud 1.0 uh, it was more uh, people uh, directly going in uh, you know one orchestration capability which uh, somebody was manning 24 7 so you had a, a help desk which was uh, basically doing a call or chat kind of a session and but very little self-help and very little event driven uh, you know uh, incident management but with this uh, control plane implementation uh, and OpenStack, what we have transformed our, uh, our in the journey of transforming our support models is we uh, incident management becomes uh, uh, you know much lighter on people, much more on automation. And uh, our goal is to have as you know 80 percent of the incidents resolved uh, either through self-help or through event uh, automation. And uh, problem management also again how do we automate that aspect of it so the uh, actual engineering organization or the DevOps organization is more focused on problem management versus incident management that's uh, our goal perspective and I'm going to go back to my foil Sorry for and hand it over to Kai. okay thank you um, uh, I'm not from Intel. I'm uh, in the green path. So we are a software partner with Intel. Because Intel is, uh, you know, supporting more hardware level. And there are a lot, lot of channels in China. And uh, more and more client, customer require add value service plus hardware level. So we are, our mission is to bring the best practice, including like uh, Intel, to more um, you know, private cloud client and uh, or even you know, public cloud client. So um, if we if we say um, OpenStack, you know, if, if our journey to 
to private cloud is uh, 100 miles, right? Private cloud, uh, OpenStack provide uh, 19 miles, you know, right? And uh, like uh, OpenStack uh, uh, release, like uh, Red Hat and Mirantis bring another, you know, nine miles, right? But uh, today's topic is about uh, production, best practice. So it's all about the last mile integration. So our mission is to integrate those last mile best practice into product. Um, then, so the first thing is we need to find out what the common things we can productize. So uh, we compare the Intel best price and the channel difference. First is about size, and uh, there are also a lot of other uh, difference, like um, they no, don't, don't have a in, you know, self-developer authentication systems and monitoring systems, all those things. Uh, there are lots of points uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we'd like to mention, but because of the time limitation, we only focus two points. The first is about the uh, standardization. And uh, um, so we are not going to create another release of OpenStack. You know, Mirantis, Red Hat, or even HP already done a lot of work on this. So we only based on those mature release to add more best practice configurations and uh, uh, you know, software. The first is, is about the, uh, you know, we enable, like uh, I, I saw an, another topic is about how to automatically deploy, uh, enable the you know, controller HA, right, by script. Actually, this is a, what we have added into our um, package. And uh, after we deploy the machine, we can enable the um, uh, you know, controller HA and uh, also VMHA. And uh, another thing is about the, uh, you know, even we use the Mirantis release or RDO release. You know, RDO always in CentOS or, you know, Red Hat uh, platform. And uh, Mirantis, we, we use Ubuntu, right? We, we found some bugs, so we enable some patches uh, on that release. So let's make, uh, you know, our package more mature than RDO or, or, or uh, full web. And we also enable some, you know, basic uh, monitoring. Uh, we are use uh, uh, actually accelerometer to enable the monitoring, uh, built-in functions, and uh, uh, like a workflow. Uh, in China, we, the, in our organization, always re requires some approval process. So we enable workflow, but it's not an uh, OpenStack workflow. It's another very simple um, self-developed workflow, and uh, we enable the redundancy configuration. An uh, interesting thing we would like to mention is about the hardware standard. You can see this hardware standard is like uh, if we familiar with uh, hyper hyper converging infrastructure, it looks like a Nutanix like, right? So this is uh, something a uh, client is looking for. If we enable OpenStack in a very simple way, like uh, we enable uh, hardware like, like this, and uh, our OpenStack its own ways shared storage built in. So another software package we enable is a distributed file system. It's uh, actually um, like uh, Intel's practice uh, built on uh, CF, right, and GlassFS. Uh, in our uh, product, it's a GlassFS built in, so which we can provide such a uh, Nutanix-like uh, open step box to our client. Very simple. Okay. Another thing is about the, uh, our methodology to create such an environment. The difference is uh, Intel's practice is focused on a production environment. But uh, if we, we, we are going to productize our best practice to more clients, our release is a package of the software. It's not a it's not a, a production environment. So we, uh, the, 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 the package actually is a RPM package. So we can release to our uh, Intel channel, server provider, resellers, and they can use this RPM to install to their channel clients. And uh, at the meantime, um, we provide L2 and L3 support and uh, 
more consultant service, standard service to them to meet the last mile requirement. So that's it. So questions? No questions? Thank you, Long Farm Orange Business Services. I have a question about uh, um, migration, so the migration of uh, legacy platform and data under uh, OpenStack. How do you manage to, to do that? Okay, uh, so the question is uh, how do we uh, migrate uh, existing legacy application data or platforms, the VMs, uh, to this? So we actually don't migrate. Uh, there is, uh, an, unless it's an absolute need, uh, at least from an enterprise IT, most of those applications, if they are running, uh, you know, uh, on existing VMs which are on Intel Cloud 1.0, we will continue let them running on that, but provide the control plane which will manage it. Uh, I'll have access through the uh, current con new control plane. No, the hypervisor is the same, same hypervisor is managing it, so there is no need for doing that. Anybody else? Any questions? Thank you. <coughs> are, are there any portions of OpenStack that are hard to deploy in a redundant fashion? Are there any portions of OpenStack which are uh, hard to deploy in a redundant fashion? Uh, for example, uh, in for example, each release, the uh, Neutron L3 is not uh, is hard to uh, dis multi-host, right? Did you find any sort of workaround for that? Uh, there are some patches in the uh, some guys develop. You can enable that, but we don't enable the L3 agent. We just use the um, uh, L2 agent to uh, let we use VLAN mode. So the VLAN can directly go through the physical switch, go outside, so to avoid the um, use the L3 agent of Neutron. Thank you. Anything else? Among, uh, among the, the um, technical vectors, uh, you mentioned uh, isolation. How uh, do you manage isolation? And um, about uh, the scalability, you mentioned automated deployment. Uh, uh, which tools uh, do you use uh, to manage uh, automated uh, deployment? Uh, for first question, for uh, we use the um, aggregate host in Nova to separate different uh, use case. For example, we have the um, high. Uh, for example, we can use the E7 CPU for the high workload VMs, we put all the VMs on that kind of host and have some uh, maybe E5 or the E3 CPU. That server is not so powerful. We run normal uh, VM on that. The, the host aggregate? Is that host aggregate, yeah. yes. You, then when you uh, put a VM, then the VM can automatically schedule to different uh, aggregate host. That's fr the second question is, uh, Auto deployment, we use the uh, puppet to do the auto deployment. Any, any other questions? For your OSs, did you manually set the MTU below 1500 or did you do jumbo frames on the Ethernet switches yeah. that were in between the hosts? We uh, use VLAN, so do not have that problem. If you use GRE, maybe you can. You have to s set the MTU below the 1,500, uh, 1, right? And yes, uh, can I answer your question? <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else? I, I just, I yeah. Can <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, I talked about technical debt when we did open OCU 1.5. So it took us almost 
six months to develop uh, a particular capability for that hybrid cloud implementation. And uh, we expected at that point of time to uh, also uh, add on capabilities like auto scaling, uh, you know, because that was a requirement for the particular use case we were working on. We realized that, uh, you know, we were not able to meet the timeline. And then uh, why do that when the community is uh, anyways working on it? And if we, the decision which we did make was that if we do any development, we are going to contribute that code upstream and work in a larger team setting rather than working in a vacuum. So that is where we, uh, you know, that's when we made the decision that it's going to be go all in with OpenStack as far as any engineering goes and not do any other integration. The, you know, there are, uh, because uh, we have a very small team and let that small team focus on uh, how to integrate it with our existing uh, infrastructure and when we do have the time, that's when we go and start contributing <coughs> externally. What percent of your workloads today are run on OpenStack and how will that look in the future? And then, um, I had another question but I can't remember. Yeah, I <laughs> So our, uh, we are in the process of transitioning to our uh, production workloads for internal facing applications uh, to run on OpenStack. So uh, today, 100% of them do not run from an internal cloud perspective. But when for our external facing, about 80% of them run on uh, OpenStack. You, you remember your second question? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You mentioned that uh, you are using uh, SDN alongside with the uh, Neutron API. Can you el elaborate on that? Uh, don't you think that uh, uh, Neutron isn't ready for uh, production? We only use the L2 agent and uh, plus VLAN mode, so I think it's stable enough. Okay. I saw you have a question. not thank you for coming and listening to our story thanks thank you